Bobby Hammett, a great round of applause for coming here. Bobby Hammett has been captivating audiences with his brand of exploratory scholarship. His focus has been on the mystical mastery system, which includes metaphysics, mysticism, and esoteric side of ancient religion. Understanding the subconscious mind and higher levels of spirituality, this is a result of over 10 years of intense research and scholarship. His topics deal with anything from UFOlogy, Genesticism, Satanism, current events, and advanced research into primal cultures on Earth such as Lemura and Atlantis. He also deals with the mysteries of melody in his higher spiritual phase, and in addition, research the astronomical mysteries of the star system Cyrus and beyond. Born in Los Angeles and raised in Mullen, South Carolina, Bro Hammond is a graduate of Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina where he majored in art. In addition, he studied computer art at Clark Atlanta University. Bobby Hammond at one time was a well sought after shoe designer, developed his own shoe line before Truth Call. Discontent with the fame and fortune, he wanted answers and began his relentless study for the truth. Inspired by Dr. By Dr. John Henry Clark and Dr. Joseph Ben Chuck County, he is considered one of the younger scholars who has taken the legacy of these uh, brides to an exploratory, futuristic level. Roe Hammett has written four books, Human, uh, what was that? Artificial. Artificial, okay, not, not autocrats. Uh, AWOS, <laughs> Titan 1, and Titan 2. Welcome, Bro Hammett. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Ashe Culture Center. I'm Paul Davis. 
and the husband of this lovely woman back here. <laughs> back from uh, Germany for a year, so even though I'm happy to see each of you, I'm a lot more pleased to see her. So you have given us an interesting dilemma for tonight, in that we don't have enough chairs. That's usually not the case. We usually have more chairs than we have people. So it's more pleasant to have more people than you have chairs. Right. So even though some people may be inconvenienced, you know that we see it as a good sign. Nana Queen Mother and uh, Echo are here. They'd like to see you at tomorrow morning service in the same number. <laughs> that would be good too. <laughs> now, I do want to uh, mention one thing, which I'm kind of taking up some of uh, Bobby's time, but I've seen the brother on videotape, so whatever time there is, even if it goes to infinity, he still <laughs> could use it. But I want to mention something to you that uh, I just met him through this videotape and seeing him tonight for the first time. But in viewing the videotape, I want to explain just a minute about the purpose of this center. Because Bobby's presence and your presence gives me a chance to say this. Because I've seen Bobby's tape. Bobby can't go anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> because you can't get people to open up the venue if they already know something about it. Now, the people that we're trying to get free from their control, they can run Ku Klux Klan people for Senate or Congress. They can send the vice president to a rally and give a talk and then claim he didn't know nothing about who the people were. <laughs> they can form a document and define you as three-fifths of a person. They can tell you you're going to have reconstruction and take it away. They can close your hospital. They can lock you up on bogus charges. That's right. They can do anything they want to do without any concern about where it's going to be done, <coughs> who's going to hear it, or what they're going to think about it. Now, the only people that have this dilemma about whether it's all right to have Bobby Hemmett here, whether it's all right to take Bobby Hemmett there, whether it's okay if we ask so-and-so, can Bobby Hemmett be there, is us. Now, we need to hear everything that can be said to us. We need to be open to anything that is said to us, especially if it's coming from our own people. We listen to everything that anybody else says to us. Absolutely. We write it down. We repeat it to other people. We spend money on it. Absolutely. Everything that anybody else tells us, we make note of it and live by it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're still in trouble. Absolutely. That ought to give us a clue that we following the wrong information. We're more religious about any religious thing than the people who say it's their religion. We do it more, longer, deeper, and better than anybody that said they do it. Absolutely. And we're still in trouble. So if we're still in trouble, and we've been doing everything that's been told to us, you don't have to be a mastermind to understand that something's been told to you that don't work. So, we have to be eager, not just making ourselves available, we got to be eager to find any voice that sounds offbeat, any voice that sounds unusual, atypical, out of the ordinary. And like John Henry Clark said, as soon as you know that you're doing something that nobody likes, 
You know you're on the right track. So, I want to say one more thing about young people, because we accuse young people. But I say it on the radio, I say it anywhere. If it wasn't for our young people telling us things in language that we don't like, in descriptive tones that we don't like, in explicit ways that we don't like, we wouldn't be doing one thing to change anything. We got to be thankful for these people that say things to us that are different. We can't tweak our way into liberation. We can't fine tune our way out of this problem. We got to change something totally. And so we have to hear people that can explain to us what these changes will look like. Absolutely. And they are dramatic changes. It's not just a matter of combing our hair a little bit different. <laughs> this is a dramatic change that's needed. So we can't listen to the common voices that are basically telling us the same thing we've heard that's for 50 right. years. They're just speaking with a little more vehemence in their voice, but the words all say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they just wait and everything will be all right. right. However you want to put it. Speaking nothing well. <laughs> so we got to be open to something that's completely different. So I'm thankful that Bobby has provided the opportunity for me to say this. But you can't go everywhere tonight and Bobby be in a place where you got this many people. But you got to ask somebody else to be there. So the sister said to me, uh, Sister uh, Rasa Mahat said, well, how long can, will we be able to stay there? I said, we're going to stay till we get finished. <laughs> So nobody, we, we pride ourselves in being able to say to ourselves that we are in a place where we can do what we want to do. We don't have to ask anybody, can we do anything? Because if you got to ask somebody, then that means they're in control of something that you're trying to do. So you can't do it like that. Now let me criticize you too. We talking about the good news and then there's the other side of that news too. Now, there's not a hundred places like this in the city of Cleveland where you can take people. So you look around, you see that it takes something to, to keep a place there. So when you think about getting that Luther Van Dross tickets and all these different things that cost money, you can send us some money too. You can send us some money that's tax deductible. All right. And say they're going to have Bobby Hemmett back one day. Bobby Hemmett can't go across to such and such a place. They're going to have some other people that can't go other places too. And the people that are in control of everything, they know that if they prevent you from hearing something, they can stop you from moving. This ain't no mystery. So we got to have a place where we can listen to what we want to listen to. They can take David Duke anywhere they want to. They can have an FBI, good old boys club, anytime they want to. They can do anything they want to do. We have to see ourselves in a position to do anything we want to do. And we don't have to apologize to nobody. We don't have to make excuses for what Bobby might say. We ain't got to call nobody tomorrow and say, we sorry Bobby said such and such, it might have bothered you. We ain't got to do that. That's what we did when John Henry Clark was down at City Hall, right? That's right, that's right. Next day you got to call folks and, and, and apologize. We don't have to apologize for what we're saying. Right. Don't nobody else apologize. That's right. That's right. So I ain't apologize. So I'm happy the brother's here. Uh, and I'm happy that you're here. Uh, but most of all, I'm happy that my wife is here. Let's bring on Sister Ari Rasa Maa. Thank you. Thank you. I just like to say, I'm so. I mean, this is so inspirational to see all these people in, in the same room. Um, this shows that we do have 
consciousness in Cleveland. Um, not only, you know, do we just represent each other as individuals, we are a different um, organization in the community. Um, your tic our tickets um, labeled all the um, people that are representative of those communities. I, I can just name some off the top of my head. Um, the Star Set Society, um, the Interview, Cultural Integrity, the African United Front. Um, Alternative solutions. I mean, call them out, please. <laughs> Alternative solutions. Um, African we got Moss number 18. Um, we do have the Delta Solidarity. Our Shade Cultural Center is making all this happen. And I'm just overwhelmed to see everyone here. Um, I do want to say one thing. We have a, several events coming up shortly in the community. Um, our African American Festival that's usually at the Western Reserve Historical Society. I want everyone to pay special attention to what's about to partake. Um, July 29th, I believe that's the date. Um, please critique the brochure. Please see how much culture that is going to be available to us. Um, they're going to have step shows. Um, the headliner is on Midnight Star. But a culture fest of African culture is supposed to, we're supposed to talk about the culture. We're supposed to celebrate the culture. And R&B groups and step shows, I don't know if that's correctly representing African culture, like where we come from and how we got here and what we're doing today. So please critique it. Um, there's a website on that brochure. So give your comments to the Western Reserve Historical Society. Let them, you know, they need to know that we, we got a conscious voice here in this community. But that, I, I really wanted to say that. And um, without further ado, I want to bring, bring Brother Hemet to you. We've been waiting for him. <laughs> wanted to come to Cleveland and I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, but I think what it was is I think being a, be, be dealing in the spirit world, I probably was having visions of coming today. And so when I thought love, years ago that I wanted to come, I was actually having these visions. And that's how things go. You have visions and you have spiritual uh, episodes that automatically come true or either manifest later on. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, I, um, so I'm glad to be here in Cleveland. Also, uh, a little more about myself. Basically, I uh, I deal with the spirit realm, um, and I deal with the sides of the spirit realm that 2,000 years ago the Roman government outlawed, and later on this this card on would call you a European society, which is also the so-called quote-unquote dark side. And believe it or not, the word. Uh, black magic just means black man's magic. The mistress of Tahuti, um, which is the mistress of alchemy, and the mistress of melody. So um, um, we're going to get into all that also, too. But it's a little note why you should always open up with, with libations. Anybody come before you, you should tell them that they don't know how to do it. And I'm quite sure this, this, uh, uh, this, this place does libations. So even if you have somebody that comes up, and a lot of people are not spiritually, political, sociological, uh, economical, and some people don't deal in the spirit realm, but even if those particular people don't have a certain amount of knowledge to do this, you should always make it upon yourself to add it in the actual program. Uh, so now also, too, we, 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 we got this policy now. Any sisters that need a seat, you brothers gonna have to well, I ask the chairs. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So many of the and stuff, you know. Uh, uh, you're gonna have you gonna have to really uh, uh and your sisters need some seats. Now I am quite sure there's some, some brothers with their mates. That's fine, but we got enough single brothers that can unask ask the chairs. <laughs> and let the sisters sit down. Thank you, bro. Uh, 
Um, brothers can park it on the floor. You know. So if you ain't got no lace around your drawers, get the hell on up. <laughs> 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 Y'all cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I this is very key. The reason why you do this is because the Europeans have remote viewing. Remote viewing is psychic spying from wherever the hell they are. They can tune in. They developed this in the 1940s. So therefore you will be in watch even if you don't even have agents up in here. You see what I'm saying? But we always know there's always agents up in here also too. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so I had to tell the brothers this in Los Angeles last week, so we got some old crazy, so they, they're actually going and paying crazy black people to come and disrupt. That's right, that's right. That's right. Me, well, I let you know a little secret. These voodoo babies and this uh, and some polyomy babies, I got them charged, so you're going to at your own risk with the funky stuff, because this shit will tear your ass. <laughs> and all, and um, them ones and them blacks is straight up demonic. <laughs> to get the job done, you see what I'm saying? So, uh, so in at your own risk, we, we deal with spiritual warfare and all, and um, so we deal with those particular things, but one thing about the remote viewing is, whenever you have a meeting, they have people that can tune in. They got black people that they have that work for them, so if they can't get through the black energy, they just get a black person to tune in. So you pour your libation, so what that does, it seals off that energy. I was down in Jacksonville, Florida about six years ago, and I poured the libation, and they got, a, they got one Baptist church down there that runs the whole entire thing, the entire town, and, you know, it's a lot of uh, uh, magicians and witches. And so they, they tune in. So as a result, when I poured the libations, they couldn't tune in, so they sent some crazy black guy down to want to invite me to go down and meet these white people. So they got a whole bunch of material they want to give you. And the key based on spiritual warfare, you go out of your zone where you got your gods blocking for you and go in their zone and they got their particular entities blocking for them and your gods can't get through and then they zap you behind. So it's crucial that you pull out base, especially now, anytime you go into the near 2000 mark, the devil, or what we call the white boy, or what we call the beast, the power of the bee, or whatever you want to call it, plain old cracker, he's getting nervous. Each day he's getting nervous. So the time for your life to be in on the stage of death has already started. It's, all, it's been started, but you best believe if he killed your behind off in mass, especially the last 15 years, and you know by 2000, you know he's getting real nervous. And that's the key. They will be shaking in their boots and still build buildings and tell you that you'll be there in the future with AT&T and all this shit to give you the catechism of impossibility. And, all, and never look to the future. That's the problem. You One day at a time. You know the damn hour. You might not know the season, but you know the hour. You might not know the day, but you know the season and you know the hour. That's biblical prophecy. You know the time is, you know, the time is, 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 is uh, not what it used to be. Like I said last night, one day is Monday, the next day is Friday. So we're talking about a week that lasts about three days maximum. So we're talking about time speeding up, we're talking about the weather. So you know at this particular time, you need to be doing some extra things also for protection and also for warfare. So we're going to also uh, deal with the whole warfare thing also too. Um, also, I'm also going to give out another money ritual tonight a smaller one you can do do on Monday. And it takes about seven days, but it will come if you do that one on Monday. We'll give that one out, then we're gonna give a big money ritual out. So you want some big finances. We'll give that one out also too. But you wanna also put your libations at all times to block. Also what this libation does is it the the entities that's inside of you. These entities and all of this particular stuff exist inside of you. Each one of you are your own small universe. 
These entities exist inside of your space. So when you go to libation, you're actually enhancing your own power. So this is something great to do before you go to court. You see what I'm saying? Uh, before you go to court and, and all. So uh, you want to do that also too. So let's uh, get the libation thing going. Uh, let's see here. Uh, little Who Doom thing. There's a, a good book I suggest. One, uh, see if I still got that book. Uh, we'll be giving bibliography out. This is a good book by Milo, M-I-L-O, Regard, G R I G A U D. R I G A U D. Make it a point to come to lectures with a pencil and a piece of paper. Because we are uh, educated people, and we're not just talking about formal education, we're just saying basically, if you can read and you can write, always take notes. Name of the book. Um, you know, this is uh, it's called Secrets, Secrets of Voodoo. Secrets of Voodoo by Milo Regard. We'll get into that. Uh, we'll get into that later on. Let's let's deal with some um, some libations right now. And I got several lists and stuff. We'll get it rolling and get the energy going on. You know. Uh, and we'll give a whole lot of magical things you also can do. Of course, there's a real good one that you can do. Uh, you shoot the jury and you shoot the judge and you shoot the the, the, the prosecution or whatever. Money mainly, you know, we're always sitting on the doggone. Defense side. <laughs> uh, so we got uh, a lot of stuff that we'll do also too. Um, we got a lot of stuff to cover. Um, looks like it's gonna be a all nighter for me. I did ten hours in it in in um, LA last week. I don't think I'll put you through that torture. But then again, if you got time, you see what I'm saying? Go with the slow time. We can roll with it. Uh, we can roll with it. Uh, got a lot of advanced information. A lot of technical information, advanced information. The good part about it is this southern accent breaks the... Something about a southern accent makes this stuff a little more common. You know, so that works, you know. You, you have those archetypes and those preachers and all that kind of stuff. But then again, on the other hand, I'm far from a preacher. You know, you know, so uh, uh, let's do this. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to get another list of, of, this, of, of, the, of the gods. Now, Two or three other lists. And we'll do that and it starts rolling. I got a lot of them in my head. So uh, let's roll with this. Okay, I pulled some in the plan. All right. All right. Ishu Oro. I know our shade means power, so be it. What else? Uh, um, several things. Ashi Oro. Ashi. Ashi Ibun. Ashi. Ashi Alaku. Ashi. Ashi Oru. Ashi. Ashi Bobo. Ashi. Ashi Bora. Ashi. Ashi Ijo. Ashi. Ashi Adi. Ashi. Ashi Adora. Ashi. Ashi Jacobo Dona. Ashi. Ashi Idubum. Ashi. Ashi. Ashi Adubum G. Ashi. Ashi Ika Ikip Elikam. Ashi. Ashi Ikaraji. Ashi. Ashi Lalo. Ashi. Ashi Fakula. Ashi. Ashi. Now we got. We want to get some loud our shades now. Loud our shades. I say, how we do you? I say, 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 I say
my ears run, get along to do libation with the, uh, the ancestors are drunk, so they ain't like them up. Right. Uh, so, uh, get us some Mayus rum, some uh, Appleton rum, any Jamaican rum, any rum from Antigua, Barbados, any rum from the islands. You see what I'm saying? Get them some of that and also, and so I guess, well, it's, it's kind of impolite to give them some and you don't take a libation. <laughs> in your house and you, you you give a certain energy or you can spit it in four corners actually four corners you can spit it four ways or four corners you can take the same rub or rum and put it in your car and spit four corners in your car and if you ain't got no insurance you don't have to worry about nothing yeah. uh, one sister was spitting this rum got stopped by the cops and gave him some insurance from like this was like i think this was in 96 she gave him a piece of paper, some insurance from 1985. <laughs> Go right along. <laughs> so we're talking about energy that you can actually use. Energy that you can actually use uh, at this particular time. Um, so uh, we got a lot of information. Like I said, also, um, uh, we have several things I bought. I'm going to get into some of this. This is one called... Uh, we got a few left. This is the Osiris book, one that is done from the uh, from esoteric aspects of uh, Osea or Aset, and um, um, uh, coming from London, England. Uh, this particular thing is a white Luciferian group spill their secrets, reveal their secrets on how to eat and destroy melanin people mm. and devour their energy. And basically, when you go into Christian church, why well, you think they got one on every block? Those churches are lined up to. To, to, to zap your particular energy. We'll get into that particular part also. Uh, don't think the cracker got a church on every block. He ain't never gave you nothing good. Why you been here? All of a sudden, he gonna give you some good damn religion? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? You see what I'm saying? So, there's a reason why you go up in there on Sundays, because they need that particular energy to make this whole Holocaust land and this particular hell system work for them. And they use your energy to fuel this whole America. And that's what the whole church thing is on every doggone corner. In Atlanta, in one section of a five-mile radius, you got almost like 110 churches right. on one side. And that's not even talking about where the King Center is and all that shit with the Martin Luther King stuff. There's another 200 churches. You see what I'm saying? And they use that particular energy. We'll get deeper into that. So we have the particular book we have. These, these rituals are coming from the British, from the University of Chicago. They have thousands of papyruses. Um, and there's a rich, these, this book has rituals for everything you want. Open the third eye, how to, uh, uh, how to uh, request for a certain vivid dream, uh, dream revelations, memory spells, direct visions. Um, like I said, for the sisters, there's some love spells up in here. And like I said, we'll give out the love spell that we gave out last night because with the black man being in retreat from the black woman in mass to the white woman, and I don't know what the black woman wants, but one thing he don't want, he don't want the fucking black woman. And it's not be funny with this mess. I go all over the country, and this was an epidemic going on with the black man. You see what I'm saying? Uh, with the black man. Uh, so therefore we got some love spells here, but we got another good love spell you can do, or two of them we gave out last night, to, to give these niggas an attitude adjustment. I'd rather see you <laughs> give them a love spell or something to, 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 to make them a zombie than to fuck around with some damn white woman. So, so we have uh, several spells on uh, so we have all that stuff that if people are interested in purchasing. Can, uh, get them during the break. So we're going to go a good, maybe two hours, maybe three hours, or whatever, about two hours, go to a break, however you want to do it. And basically, we're going to pull an all night up. We're going we're gonna to push it until the people say, okay, I'm tired, we got to go home. So the ones that you know got to go somewhere, get your fill, and then you know you leave, and the ones that want to stick it through it all, you know, as uh, long as we, um, 
long as we uh, there's a, a call of answers and stuff, we'll be here also too. Um, so we're going to deal with all that too. So right now, what we want to do is we want to get into what is called a hard copy, and basically that's things that is going on. How many people never heard me before? Raise your hand. Okay, so basically what we want to deal with right now, we want to deal with a couple of things that's, that's, that's key issues around the United States that we're going to deal with at this particular time. Uh, um, things that's been happening, especially the last 10 years, we want to go into some of that, and then we want to go into the advanced esoteric teaching. But right now, what I want to deal with right now is uh, the, uh, the killing in the project on the whole East Coast and basically the Midwest. And in so many words, um, Atlanta got hit hard. They basically, from 1990 to like 1998 or uh, 99, they came in and they closed down just they closed down all of the projects in Atlanta, and they got rid of the people. But they didn't relocate them. They would probably re relocate about 30 people, and then the rest of those particular people, um, they would exterminate. Um, they would they would exterminate. And so we're going to go into some of this right now, as well as some other stuff, and understand what the extermination is. And I'm, so this is not a theory. This is the reality of what's going on. <coughs> um, they even showed you that in 1992, when they literally um, got rid of damn near 10,000 black men in Los Angeles in 1992. But we want to go into the other details on what actually happened to the bodies and stuff and where all this stuff is um, and what actually happened to these particular bodies and stuff and um, how is it that um, through mistake in Atlanta I end up um, eating some of these bodies right in your local restaurants and stuff like that so that's where they're filtering this food and stuff uh, so uh, we want to go into some of this particular stuff this is this is reality now don't think that the cracker didn't do it because he's always been doing it. Now all you have to do is understand history to know that this particular stuff happened. Like I said last night, the whole thing started from the Mind Brain Report of 1983, where they concluded that that uh, the black man was God, or the black man or black people was God because black people had melanin. Mind Brain Report called Pribbering. And uh, also by 1986, they had a great conference here in America that included and concluded that the kundalini energy at the base of the spine, which is the, uh, which is, you know, the staff of the Huli, or some of you know the medical association, but the kundalini energy at the base of the spine has started rising in black people. And they understood that by 1990, if they didn't, if they didn't, uh, kill off a certain amount of black people that that particular energy that particular energy, this serpentine energy would kill off all the mutated strands like in all forms of nature the mutated strands is automatically killed off the survival of the natural selection is automatically killed off based on when you get a certain amount of your energy back so therefore they had to eliminate a certain amount of melanated people or kundalini people all over the planet. Uh, some of the conference proceeding is in a book called Sign, Sign and the Serpent by Mark Balfour. Uh, Mark Balfour, Sign and the Serpent is the name of that particular book that deals with those conference proceedings in 1976, 1986 and all, where this particular serpentine fire, this kundalini energy in us had to be quailed or had to be shut down by killing off masses of black people. Uh, masses of black people. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, to not understand, I deal with what is called the esoteric teachings, or what is called the, the mystery system. And in so many words, we have several scholars with the Afrocentric movement that ended up talking about ancient Kemet and ancient Africa, but they always talk about a mystery system, but they never would go into the mystery system because they could, because they were historians. So you must not uh, uh, confuse this with history. Yes, I have a historical background because I was in on the ground floor with the whole Afrocentric movement. But what was supposed to happen is we were supposed to take this stuff and go to the next level with it. Right. But as often, Dr. John Henry Clark and, and Dr. Ben was doing great work and niggas start following them. And the next thing you know, 
We just stopped because we were conscious. We had all there was. We talked about 360 degrees of knowledge, and nobody would tell you what shit this knowledge was. Right. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, so basically, this is ongoing research into those realms of the mystery system. Uh, in, of the mystery system. And so we thought that the, the stolen legacy was the mystery system book, and basically that was a book that was just hinting around that there was a mystery system, uh, but didn't reveal too many doggone mysteries other than the byproducts of the mystery system, which, which later on went into Western education. So what we're talking about is the deep realms of esoteric knowledge, and we'll deal with that, we'll back this stuff up with scholarship, and for the, all the people that have my tapes and stuff, you'll understand, if we give up enough scholarship that, um, uh, we give up enough scholarship that in actuality you can just look at the tapes and just get tons of these books. So it's not like it's some person coming before you with a whole bunch of just giving you a theories and stuff and not being able to back this stuff up based on scholarship. And you do it several ways. One way on the spirit realm, there's certain things you're not going to find in a book. But if you can give enough scholarship and give a basis for the esoteric teaching, then you can understand that there can be greater things that you're not going to understand in books. But you still must have a basis, a base system of scholarship to draw from. So what we're talking about here is we're world-class people and in actuality, blessed are those who read, tells you in the Bible. Uh, study to know thyself approved. Not necessarily study the Bible, right. but study to know thyself approved. So basically, I'm coming from that particular school and I'm a researcher, so therefore, we got plenty of documentation and stuff like that. And this shit is open for challenge, too. Uh, you see, also, too, uh, you know, because basically, we, because we deal with scholarship, the best thing we can do is just give you the information, give you the book. And it's not about you following somebody or taking what I say. That's not the key here, because it's not a movement. I'm not trying to you sign up for no sheet. Sign no sheet up. You're going to send me your money so I can send you a prayer call or whatever kind of thing. <laughs> Um, you don't need to follow me nowhere, shit, you know. Uh, you know, like I said, yeah, I, the last, I mean, I got a stove, got two fucking eyes on it. You gonna follow me some damn way, it take me a damn hour just to cook some food and shit. <laughs> two small eyes. So, you know, uh, that's the key, you always following people. So, you know, um, so we want to, um, we want to get into another line, and what we want to deal with now is we got to deal with you becoming God. That's what this thing is about. You Come raise on, up to the God realm and not following anybody. That's the key. Uh, also, uh, this is one of the statements, statements that's always said by a brother that's down in Atlanta. There's a native of Cleveland, Brother C. Freeman L. Right. How many people know Brother C. Freeman L.? Yeah, um, and that was one of his main statements. I mean, C. Freeman L. was one of my teachers on med med uh, meditation and meditation and more science. And he um, also said this is about becoming God, generator, operator, and destroyer. And basically, that's what the mystery system is. And so therefore, we must deal with that particular information also, too. I also want to dedicate this lecture to a sister. I got, uh, you might have not heard me talk about a brother named Juju on the tapes. Well, his wife died um, last uh about a week ago and stuff, so I want to dedicate the lecture to Sister Amuyua also. And which is interesting, this brother is a very advanced psychic, and I went to go see him the other day because when I found out his wife had died, um, I was on my way to Los Angeles, and I found out that night after they buried her. So I, that Monday when I got back, we went to go see him. I uh, went to go see him um, that Monday after I got back. Um, and it was interesting because he's such an advanced person that can basically leave his body and go where the hell he wants to. So when his wife died, she had an aneurysm. She was like 51. She had an aneurysm and died in his arm. And it, it, it's sad, but it was interesting because when she started leaving, he said, fuck it, I'm going too. And he started going. So he jumped out of his body and started following her. And so she turned around and laughed at him and pushed him back in his body and said, go back. You see? Uh, go back. But uh, it's just interesting how advanced this particular brother was. He was just going to get the hell on with her, you see. But she turned around and laughed at him and said, go on back, crazy. And like I said before, we, we, we cry about the death, about, about the dead, but you don't see no dead people trying to come back to this ragged ass piece of shit. <laughs> Physical body don't want nothing to do with this shit. Right. The only reason 
reason why sometimes they cling is because you grieve so much until they get trapped. You see what I'm saying? They get trapped. I see we got a brother from uh, Detroit back there, you know, a couple of people from Detroit or whatever. And, uh, you know, and uh, we got a brother here from the, uh, uh, Clark Atlanta University doing an intern here, and I see him showed up. See, he showed up. And also, uh, um, so, uh, uh, but, the, but the key here is, is uh, um, this brother, he, uh, this brother here, he's very advanced, and several other things happened. Like, I moved in this house, me and my mate moved in this house about a year ago, and I was wondering, it's a real nice house, hardwood floors, I mean, it's just, it's just a nice little cottage down there, and it don't, it, it's, it's old enough that it looks like it don't fit between the two houses. I said, what is this real nice house, you know, and all of a sudden we got this house, and the guy said he screened 50 people before he let somebody get in, and so he said. But all of a sudden, uh, before, when we walked in and looked at the house, when we, when we uh, walked out, he said, um, do you all want it? And so anyway, we got in the house, and, we, and, and I didn't have, we didn't put a refrigerator in the kitchen for a year because the kitchen had this smell in it. And uh, we couldn't figure out what was going on because we washed, bleached, ammonia, anything you want to get that smell out, and it wouldn't leave, it would leave by the day and come back. So what we did, we had an a, a iron door, one of the um, burglar bar doors, we just, during the summer, we let it open the whole summer, and it basically dried out, but during the winter, it started coming back. I'm like, wait a minute, some shit is going on here. So around October, around late September, early October, we walked in the house and the telephone wires was cut. I'm like, damn, this is odd. <laughs> the, uh, I said, well, we know that the government ain't gonna break in the house to cut no wires. Yeah. They break in the house to bust some shit. You saw it in the other state. Yeah. I said, so that's out. I said, ain't no black person gonna break in the house to steal nothing and, and just to cut the telephone and don't steal nothing. Right. You mean they had money laying around? And then I said, and then I said, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, I said, well, it must be a ghost. And um, basically, uh, my, uh, my girl was an ex, she was a, a, an advanced psychic, so she could see it and all, so I said, you need to try to get a channel and try to find out what it was, and she, she just got the name Josephine, and so um, then she, she started going swimming every morning, and so when she hit the pool and hit the water, Josephine came and said, I'm Josephine, today is my birthday, and I want you to get me out of the, um, I want you to get me out of the house. You saw it, it's about like six cents and the rest of these things. They would be trapped, they don't know. And so get me out of the house. So what happened was we did a, 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 a ritual for a brother, a healing ritual, and I called on the ancestors to call on, did the libation. And what happens is when you call on, the, call on them, what happens is they actually come, so they're here now. So when we call out all the ancestors and call out all of the, the gods, they was actually in the house. And so Josephine was like, hey, shit. I got caught there all of a sudden. <laughs> so after they left, Joseph didn't know I'm going to go where they're going. So she told us, it's my birthday, and I want you to get me out of the house. So we did a, a ritual to get her out of the, uh, you know, did a ritual, and I told her, I walked her through the ritual to get her out of the house. I told her to go through the door. I told her to grab Anubis's hand, a Andrew's hand. I, I opened, I put the door and imagined the light, told her to walk out the door, and I told her when she got out the door, change herself into a dove and fly on and go towards the darkness. That's the key. Don't go towards the light. Go towards the light, you fucked up. Don't go to the light. That's a trip. We'll go in there later on. And so anyway, she, she left. We got her, so anyway, she, she did what we said and she left. It's a short story. About a week later, um, Ginger said, I see a man up in here. And uh, she said, he kind of mean, too. And I said, well, I asked him, does he want to go, you know, he was like, no, I want y'all to get y'all asses out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute. You the one that cut the phone wire. I said, okay, you, you want to act like ass? I said, tonight when you come, I'm getting your ass about it. I'm, no, I'm going to whip your behind. I said, that's what I'm going to do. So we got there and all we called on some real powerful spirits, and I told him to, 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 to throw his behind on out. And anyway, they drove his behind. I thought like in the movie, uh, The Mummy, when, they, when, when, the, when the chariot came and drove the guy oh, yeah. off, if you see, saw that movie, and, we, and so anyway, we got him out of there. And actually, one of the rituals in here, how to release, the one that I'm selling, how to release something from what binds it, uh, from its bounds. It was actually one from the University of Chicago, 
that I actually did, as, uh, among other things. But anyway, as um, soon as we got him out of the house, we didn't smell that smell anymore. And so that was his smell up in the doggone house. You see, there was some nasty, probably, Josephine was a black woman and probably moved into the house. You know how these neighborhoods is real nice, homes they're white, and then they go black? Yeah. And then the black people moved in. So she was living in the house in one dimension, and this cracker who had died was probably one of the original people, was living in another dimension. You see what I'm saying? Now, the good part about it is that the guy who sold us the house was a dog on Undertaker, and I know that he knew that house was haunted. Because it's amazing how we drop off the rent, we ain't seen his brother since the day we signed the lease. <laughs> I'm up in such a nice house, and I'm like, wait a minute. I said, he might ride down in the grass and cut on the damn bushes. And I don't never have no problem out of him. I said, this cat had to know that that house was haunted. Mm -hmm. He probably had a lot of other tenants that had problems. And so he pointed off on us and just so happened we did the right thing and got exercised and behind him out of there. But by him being an undertaker, he had to know that. You see what I'm saying? Um, um, he had to know that also, too. And so uh, about my girlfriend being an uh, uh, advanced psychic, which uh, just so happened that she's psychic enough that about two months ago, about a month ago, um, she decided that she, it was time for her to leave me. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, and, I, and, and basically, in so many words, I know it was a seven-year cycle that was up, and, she, and it wasn't an argument or nothing. She said, you know, I have to go. It's time for me to go. You know, and she was, you know, she, like I said, I got her when she was 20. <laughs> she was a virgin, so she was like, well, you know, it's time for me to go and see what else is out here. I never, I never been out on my own. So basically, when she said it, she said, now, you know it's spiritual. You know I got to go. And I said, yeah, I guess you got to go because it was uh, two, other, uh, two other sisters told me back in 94 that she was going to be leaving. So when the time came, you know what I'm saying, I knew she had to go. I said, but you know, shit, I got a $650 rent. based on this particular project. What they did is, the project in Atlanta was based off of what is called the Atlanta Project. The Atlanta Project was started at the turn of the century where they built the first project in the United States. And it was from those projects that the New Deal, from Roosevelt's New Deal and Great Society programs built the high rises in the major cities. But the original, the oldest projects was Techwood Homes and John Hope Homes in Atlanta, Georgia. So therefore, it was fitting that when they started to get rid of the project, I mean, remember now, when they said they're getting rid of the welfare, everything is cold here. You know, urban means black, it, uh, uh, criminal means black male. Everything is cold in this country. So when they said they're getting rid of the welfare, they were talking about getting rid of the welfare people. So it was fitting that they go back to Atlanta, the CDC is in Atlanta. And in so many words, basically, they gifted out those projects and up under the projects, and we was wondering, why, how is it that, how is it that we can have these projects, and we wake up one morning and all the people go in and nobody see them leave? You couldn't understand that. But these projects were built with underground trap doors and passages, so basically they cleaned them out from inside out, uh, and basically put them on trains up under you know, the project, because the simple fact, Atlanta has an underground. That says there's an underground, you know, there's an old downtown that they built another downtown on top of. So if they got an under down, underground commercial in Atlanta, they have to have an under, underground residential in Atlanta. And so these projects were built on top of railways. And so basically, they put them in these trains and shipped them to the shipping yard. We know where the shipping yard is. And they shipped them to these factories. And now this is not just in Atlanta, Trenton, Newark, and Newark, some people went down, they, they get up, they go, people in the project, they, they go downtown, they do all the little shopping. They went back home that night, the padlocks was on the project. And they said, I was say, well, where happened to the people? They said, we don't know. South Carolina, or North Carolina, even Atlantic City, we went there and the projects cleaned out. Went to Milwaukee, and one of the brothers, was 
limiting, so what they'll do is they'll clean out the projects from the inside. They'll leave a few people, so they'll take all the rest and they'll move those people to the, the ones near the street. Mm -hmm. Then they'll cut on the lights in some of the other projects, and it makes you think that they're still vacant. I mean, you know, we're we're alive, occupied. It don't make you think that they're vacant. So what happens here is, we went to the projects in, um, in Milwaukee, and one of the brothers showed us the underground passage where you can go up underground. He said, we used to play up in here when we were kids. And the whole project was empty except one section, and his mother stayed in that section, and I think based on her income, whether she was mobile enough that she would be missed they ended up, they moved the ones that, that have a certain income and mobile enough that they would be mixed to where people started asking questions. They would move them to that outside project and they clean out the rest. But they literally clean them out, put them on these trains all over the country, <coughs> ship them to these factories, chop up the bodies. They get the gastrointestinal tract where the melanin is, all the deepest part, all of your, um, all of the brain, just about your whole pineal, pituitary, thalamus gland, um, heart regions, all di different uh, parts. Um, and they make melatonin pills, growth hormones, Viagra, Viagra is melanin. Um, uh, Prozac, all types of mind altering drugs and stuff. Uh, and whole health food industry, we talk about literally thousands and thousands of products that they make off of this melanin. They take the skin and strip it off, dry it out, crush it up, and make another form of melody. And this is interesting because last year, back in um, this, uh, Christmas of 98, a brother named Rince, he said, well, my, my sister died. My sister died, and uh, no, my, my, my cousin died, and we was all over the house, but that night she died. So the Mar called and told her husband, um, said, you know, and checking off the stuff that she supposedly had donated her organs. And so after they got through, they said, are you interested in selling her skin? What? Are you interested in selling her skin? And the guy said, hell no. You don't be interested in selling no skin or whatever like that. So what they do is, if you say yes, they strip the body. They strip everything off of the body. They leave just the hands and the head. But yet they go up in the head and take all the, the, the organs out anyway. So when you die in the autopsy, they take the organs out also. So they strip all that off. So that's why also, too, you have these funeral homes that's being bought, these black funeral homes are being bought by these white men all over the country now. That's because what they do is that they can't have all that good ass melanin going to the grave, especially old people, because you, you know, especially old black women and old black men.